Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of our lesson, Analysis of Trust. If you missed the first part, I provided the link in the description. If you want to watch it, please click the link. Example number one. Now we are asked to compute for the force in each member of the trust shown. Use the method of joints. And then we are asked to use joint method to compute for the forces on each member of our trust system. And we have also loads. We have 10,000 Newton and 6,000 Newton, which is acting at joint B and joint C, respectively. So these loads here causes reactions on each member of our trust. Okay? So the first thing you need to do here is, of course, to compute for the reaction. So yan yung una mong gagawin dito. You determine the reactions of this truss. Now we have two supports. We have hinged support. We have also a ruler support. Now for hinged support, we have two reactions, correct? Vertical reaction, let's say that is reaction at A, that's vertical. And reaction at A, that is horizontal. For a ruler support, we have only one reaction since we are allowing our um, structure to move freely along the horizontal axis. So we have reaction here R, D, Y. Okay? So in order to determine for the reactions, we can um, try to compute for the horizontal reactions here. So we have summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero. All the forces to the right are positive. Then we have RAX. Since our RAX here is acting to the right, so therefore we assume that it's positive. Now, we do not have load acting horizontally, correct? We only have load that is um, positioned vertically. So therefore, we can equate this as equal to zero. So therefore, we do not have reaction horizontal that is RAX. Now, for vertical reactions, we have we have two loads and we have two vertical reactions. So we can say that summation of forces vertical is equal to zero. All the forces that is acting upward are positive. So we have R A Y that is positive since it is acting upward plus R D Y minus. Now take note of this one. We have 10,000 Newton that is negative since it is acting downward that is opposite from our reactions or opposite from our assumed positive direction. So we have minus 10,000 Newton. The same as with 6,000 minus 6,000. Okay, that is equal to zero. So we have our equation RAY plus RDY you combine 10,000 and 6,000, then we have negative 16,000 is equal to zero. Now, we have two unknowns here. We have unknown RAY and unknown RDY. So, we have two unknowns. So, therefore, we should have another equation. So, how, can, how are we going to formulate for our second equation here? So, we can actually use summation of moment. Now, you can use either summation of moment at joint A or summation of moment at joint D. So, it doesn't matter kung saan ka mag-start. But for me, I would prefer to start or to sum up moment at joint D. So, we have summation of moment at joint D is equal to zero. All the moment counterclockwise are positive. So, this is my assumption. So, all the moment that is counterclockwise, that's that is positive okay so again moment from your physics that is just basically equal to the force times the perpendicular distance okay now we have moment of reaction a y since it does have a perpendicular distance from d and the perpendicular distance from d is 10 meters so you just sum up 3 plus 4 plus 3 so we have 10 meters so we have R A Y times 10. Correct? Now, what is the sign? Is it positive or negative? Now, take note if you have a seesaw, okay, like for example, this one, and you have this R A Y acting upward at this point, so that would generate 
a clockwise moment, correct? That's clockwise. That would happen sa ating CISO. So, it would rotate clockwise. So, therefore, it is opposite from our assumption that counterclockwise are positive. So, therefore, we could say that the moment caused by reaction AY is negative. So, we have negative here. Then, we have moment caused by the load 10,000 and the perpendicular distance from D is 7. So, you just add 4 plus 3 to 7 meters. Now, it causes counterclockwise rotation with respect to D. So, therefore, that one is positive. And the same as with 6,000 Newton, it has a perpendicular um, distance from D, which is 3 meters. So, it's still positive since, again, it rotates or it cause moment clock in counterclockwise direction. So, all of these are equal to zero since, again, the, we have equilibrium. Okay? So, by further simplifying, we have RAY here equals to 8,800. Now, the unit is in meter since the unit of 10 here is in meter, correct? So, we can actually cancel out meters all throughout and our remaining unit is newton our ay here is positive so we get a positive value so therefore our assumption that our ay is upward is correct so therefore the direction of our ay is upward okay since again we have positive in case na makuha natin dyan is negative so that means we have wrong assumption of RAY. RAY is downward instead. Okay, but you have to be consistent with the sign. If you do not want to change the direction, then you should use negative sign all throughout your all throughout the process. But you, if you change the direction, then you also change the sign as well. Okay, so you adapt the positive value if you tend to change the direction. But in this case, we have um, already correct assumption which is upward so as is that is positive so we have the value of ra now we can use this equation this equation here so we can um, use the value of ra we have 8800 newton that's the value of ray plus the unknown rdy minus 16000 newton is equal to zero so, we have our dy here, which is equal to 7,200 newton. And this is positive, so therefore, our assumption that our di or our dy rather is correct. And that is, our dy is upward. Again, if in case na you assume that our dy here is downward, so obviously, you will get a value of negative here. That means you have incorrect assumption or you have wrong assumption, okay? So, we have the value of our dy here is 7,200 newton. Our ay here is we have 8,800 newton. So, we can now compute for the forces on every member of our truss by using joint method, okay? So, we can start or you choose uh, the joint which has a... Um, a less number of forces or a lesser number of unknown. So, in this case, we can either use A and D since A and D has two members connected, okay? So, if dito tayo sa B or sa C, we have three members na na-connected. It would be very difficult for us to compute for um, this member since we do not have at least one known values, okay? So, we can... Um, use A or D here as our initial joint to be considered. Okay? Now we are done with the computation of the reactions and now let's proceed to the computation of the forces on every member of our truss. Now, saan ba tayo mag-start dito joint since we are um, asked to use joint method in this problem? So, we choose the joint which has the least number of unknowns. Now, in this one, at joint B, we have three forces. 
connected, okay, or three members connected. So therefore, we have three unknowns. So it would be very difficult for us to use B or C. But for A and D, we have two members that are connect, okay. So therefore, we can use either of A or joint D. But in this um, sample, I'll try to to use joint A here as our first joint uh, or joint for analysis. Okay, so we have at uh, joint A. Now at joint A, we have um, forces that is acting on that joint. We have the reaction A Y, and this one we have computed already. This one we have eight thousand eight hundred. Okay, now. We have the force of member AE and member AB, but again, we do not know yet the direction of their forces, so we can assume first, okay? So you will know if your assumption is correct if you get either positive or negative value. If you have a positive answer, that means your assumption is correct, but um, otherwise, your assumption is incorrect or wrong. Now, we assume our AE here as, let's say, compression that is acting towards the joint. So, we have our force here acting towards the joint. Let's say that's our PAE or the force of member AE. Again, you can assume that or you can say that a force is compression if it is acting towards the joint. If tension naman, if it is acting away from the joint. Now, for AB, I'm gonna assume this one as tension. So, therefore, it is acting away from the joint. So, we have um, tension for PAB. Again, take note, these are all assumptions. You can, uh, you can um, be sure of your directions once you get the correct answer if you have a positive answer that means you have correct assumption otherwise you have wrong assumption okay now our goal here again is to compute for the force ae or the force at member ae and the force at member ab so we can use the equilibrium equation summation of force vertical summation of force horizontal Okay, but we cannot use summation of moment here since we are dealing with joint method. Okay, so wala, tayo, wala tayong perpendicular distance. If we sum up moment at joint A, so we do not generate or we cannot generate moment or rotation since walang perpendicular distance ang mga forces natin. So, or what should be the first thing that we need to do here? So we can use... Equilibrium, equilibrium equation, summation of forces horizontal, or summation of forces vertical. But if we use summation of forces horizontal first, we would have two unknowns. And that is PAB, since this one is acting horizontally, and the horizontal component of AE. Now take note, PAE here has two components, the horizontal and the vertical component. So if this one is, this one is PAE, now, take note, it has a vertical component, let's say PAE vertical, and it does have a horizontal component, let's say we have PAEH, or that is the horizontal um, component here. Okay, now we sum up forces vertical, and we assume that all the forces upward positive are zero, Okay, so we have 8,800 since that is acting upward, that's positive, okay? And the vertical component of PAE, so we have the vertical component of PAE here. This one is PAEV. So we have, um, now since that is acting downward, so therefore it is negative, PAEV, Okay? And this equals to zero since we do not have other um, vertical forces na. Okay? Now, our problem here is how are we going to compute for PAEV? Now, our goal here is to compute for PAE, not PAEV, not, the, not its vertical component. Okay? So, we have to convert PAEV here in terms of PAE. How are we going to do that one? Now, take note, this one 
is we have angle here this angle is theta correct now we have if we use sine theta we know that sine theta is opposite over um, hypotenuse correct that's opposite over the hypotenuse so therefore our sine theta is equal to opposite of theta is p a e v and the hypotenuse is p a e correct so therefore we can say that p a e v is basically equal to p a e so we cross multiply cross multiply sine theta so basically we are just using um, the concept of trigonometry here now we have um, the value of PAEV, which is equal to PAE sine theta. So, we use that value in our equation. So, we have 8,800 minus PAE sine of theta equals to 0. Okay? So, we can get angle theta here by looking at our um, member. Okay? Now, our theta, the theta in our load, this theta here is basically this theta or the angle of inclination of member AE. Correct? So, how are you going to compute for theta? Now, theta, we just need to have first the distances. If this is our triangle, now we know this one is 4 meters, correct? That's a vertical distance. And the horizontal distance from this point to A is, um, now take note, this is symmetrical with respect to y-axis. So therefore, this location here is in between B and C. So therefore, we have 2 meters here and we have 2 meters here as well. Since the total distance between B and C is 4 meters. So therefore, we have horizontal distance here is equal to 3 plus 2, we have 5 meters. Okay, so we have a triangle. A right triangle to be specific the vertical is 4 meters the horizontal is 5 meters and this angle our angle theta okay now take note we can compute now for theta here which is just tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent from trigonometry we have 4 over 5 so theta is equal to the arc tangent of 4 over 5 and this gives us angle theta, which is 38.66 degrees. Okay, so that could be you um, used here. So we have 8,800 minus PAE sine of 38.66 degrees is equal to zero. But other way is we, we substitute sine theta here as a value hindi na tayo gagamit ng angle how are we going to do that one now going back to this triangle now the the hypotenuse here is basically equal to c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared from pythagorean theorem so we have c is equal to square root of a squared plus b squared square root of let's say this one is our a and this one is our b a is 4 squared plus 5 squared, correct? And this will give us square root of 41. And that is the length of our member AE. So member AE has a total length of square root of 41 or approximately that is equal to 6.4 meters. Okay, that's the total length of our A. But for... Um, exactness, so we use the radical instead na lang. Now, our goal here is to is to um, eliminate sine theta and and let that be represented by a value. Now, from this case, we know that sine theta going going to this triangle, looking at this triangle, sine theta is the opposite over hypotenuse, correct? And the opposite is 4 meters. That's the opposite of our angle theta over the hypotenuse with the square root of 41. So we can use this value in our equation. Okay? So hindi na tayo gagamit ng angle. So we can um, rewrite this one as 8,800 minus 
PAE, sine theta is equivalent to 4 over square root of 41, correct? And this equals to 0. So we can compute the value of AE here, PAE, which is equal to 14,086.873. And the unit is in Newton since we know 8,800 here is in Newton. Okay, now we have positive answer. So therefore, our assumption that AE is compression is correct. Okay, so therefore, the direction, this direction here is correct. So we can say that um, PAE here is in compression. Okay, so PAE is in compression. Okay, so one force down so we have five unknown forces left now since we have already PAE so going back to the joint this one here we can um, use summation of force horizontal is equal to zero all the forces acting to the right are positive so let's assume so we have um, PAB okay Again, look at the joint A here, this force system here. PAB is going to the right, so therefore, we have positive. Now, we have also the horizontal component of inclined force AE. Okay? So, we have horizontal component. Again, this component here is PAH. Correct? And that is acting to the left direction, so therefore, that is negative. So, minus... P A E H. Okay, sorry, this should be um, P A E horizontal. And this equals to um, zero since we do not have horizontal load now. Now, again, we should eliminate P A E H here and replace it by P A E or the inclined force. So we have um, P A B, our unknown, minus. Now, this one. Again, going back to this figure, this one, so we have cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent of theta is PAEH over the hypotenuse PAE. So we have PAEH is equal to PAE cosine of theta, correct? So you just cross multiply. So we have P, the force uh, of member AE, cosine of theta is equal to zero. So again, you can use theta here, 38.66 degrees, or you can substitute cosine theta here as a fraction. So how are we going to replace that? So going back to this figure, to this one, okay? Now, we know that cosine theta is basically equal to the adjacent 5 over the hypotenuse square root of 41. You can use PAB minus PAE cosine of 38.66 degrees is equal to 0. Or you can use PAB minus PAE cosine 38.66 degrees equal to 5 over square root of 41. The value, this value here, okay? And this equals to 0. Now, we all we already have the value of AE, which is 14,086, correct? So, we have PAB minus 14,086.873 times 5 over square root of 41 is equal to 0. So we have PAB here by um, further simplifying. PAB here is equal to 11,000 Newton. And this one is positive. We get a positive value. So therefore, our assumption that PAB acting to the right or that is intention okay since this is acting away from the joint so therefore pab is correct our assumption of pab is correct so therefore this one is intention okay in other words it causes stretch sa ating member 
Okay, so we have two forces known. So let's move to the other joints to compute for other unknowns. Okay? So we have already computed the force of member AE and the force of member AB. Now let's move to um, member DE and member CD. Okay? So we move at joint D. At joint D. So at joint D, we have the reaction dy which we know that is acting upward so therefore that's 7200 newton and again we do not know still the direction of the force acting at member de and member cd correct but we assumed again that member de is compression okay that let's say that's pde and the member CD is tension. Okay, that's acting away from the joint. That's it, our PCD. So we can have um, summation of forces vertical is equal to zero, upwards are positive. So we have 7,200 newton, then minus the vertical component of PDE is one. Let's say that's PDEV minus PDEV. So therefore, this all equals to zero. Now, PDEV is equal to PDE. If it's our angle theta, okay, PDE is this one. It's parallel to the other side. So PDEV, okay. So therefore, we have PDEV is equal to PDE um, sine of theta, correct, from trigonometry. Again, the theta here is 38.66 degrees since this angle theta here is um, equivalent to this angle here. Equal sila since this is symmetrical along the y-axis. Okay, or you can simply use sine theta here is equivalent to 4 over square root of 41, just like what I have computed kanina. Okay? So we have 7,200 newton minus PDEV is forces at uh, member DE times 4 over square root of 41 is equal to 0. PDE is equal to 11,525.624. That's in Newton. Again, this is positive. We get a positive answer. So, therefore, our assumption that PDE is compression is correct. So, this, this one is compression since we get positive value. Then, we compute for the PCD. So, we can sum up, sum up forces horizontal is equal to zero to the right are positive so we have um, PCD PCD is going to acting to the left therefore it's negative then that and then we have the horizontal component of PDE and uh, the horizontal component of PDE is acting towards the right direction so therefore that one is positive to so PDEH Okay, so we have um, the horizontal component PDEH and this equals to zero. Now PDEH or the horizontal component of, P of um, force on member DE is basically equal to PDE cosine of theta. So I have already um, proved this one, correct? And cosine theta, again since our thrust is perpendicular, symmetrical with respect to the y-axis, so therefore we have the same theta here. Okay, the same theta. So that is um, horizontal. We have five over square root of forty-one. You have um, negative PCD plus PDE times five over square root of forty-one is equal to zero. Now PDE 
is 11,525. So we use that value. So we have 11,525.624 times 5 over square root of 41 is equal to 0. So PCD here is equal to 9,000 newton. And we again, we get a positive answer. So therefore, our assumption that PCD is tension. Now take note, PCD here is tension, correct? Since this is acting away from the joint. So therefore, that is correct assumption. So therefore, we have tension. So we have now three unknowns left. That is member BE, member BC, and member CE. Okay? So we can use either joint B or joint C. So we use at joint B. So at joint B, we have vertical load, 10,000 newton. We have um, member BA. Now take note, member AB, we already, have, we already computed the internal force of AB, correct? And we have computed PAB equals to 11,000 newton. This one. So we will be using this one, okay? And this one is tension. So therefore, at joint B, we have um, the force of member AB, which is tension. Okay, so we are going to the um, away from the joint. This one is PAB. So this is in tension, since again, from our uh, previous solution at joint A, we, um, we prove that force AB is tension. Okay, and we have computed this one, which is equal to 11,000. Then we have um, BC. Okay, now BC, again, we assume it as tension. Let's assume it as tension. P, B, C. And member BE, let's assume that as tension as well. Let's say that's P, B, E. Okay, so these are the forces acting at joint B. So we can use um, summation of force vertical or horizontal, but I guess the easiest one is summation of force vertical, so because we would only come up with one unknown, and that is the vertical component of BE. Okay, this one. That is PBE vertical. So we have summation of forces vertical is equal to zero, upward positive. So we have PB EV. Now that is positive since that is acting upward, correct? Plus, then minus the load 10,000 newton. That is negative since that is acting downward, opposite from our assumption that upward forces are positive. So this equals to zero, correct? So, however, again, we are interested with the value of PBE instead of its vertical component. So in that case, we need to change PBEV in terms of its resultant PBE. Now we know PBEV here, okay, if this our angle alpha, if this our angle alpha, then we have sine of alpha, that's the opposite, the vertical component of PBE over the resultant PBE, that's the hypotenuse. Okay, so therefore, PBEV is equivalent to PBE sine alpha. We can change sine alpha here in terms of fraction by looking at the, the figure. Okay, our truss figure. So we know again that this one here is 2 meters. This one is 2 meters and the height is 4 meters. So therefore, this one is alpha, correct? Because this is the direction of our force PBE. Okay? So by looking at the right triangle, this one is alpha. This one is 4 meters and 2 meters. So we can compute for the length of our BE here by Pythagorean theorem, which equivalent to 4 squared plus 2 squared in square root, then C is equal to 2 square root of 5. Okay, so therefore the length of member BE is 2 square root of 5, or if you, if you get the decimal, it is 4.472. But we use the 
radical sign to be exact. Okay? So, PBEV, we can um, change sine alpha here as sine alpha is equivalent to opposite 4 over the hypotenuse 2 square root of 5. Okay, so we have here PBEV is equal to PBE times 4 over 2 square root of 5. So we change PBEV here as um, first on member BE times 4 over 2 square root of 5 minus 10,000 is equal to 0. So member BE has a force equals to 11,180.34. This one is in Newton. Okay? So this is the answer for the force on member BE. So we can now compute for the force of member BC. And now take note, we have positive answer. So therefore, we have correct assumption that BE or force BE is in tension. Okay? Now for member BC, we can use summation of forces horizontal is equal to zero. All the forces to, to the right are positive. So therefore, we have um, positive PBC minus PAB plus the horizontal component of BE. Let's say that's PBEH. And this equals to zero. Okay? Now, PBE H, this one, we have um, PBEH is basically equal to PBE cosine of alpha. Okay? Now, we know that cosine alpha from this triangle is equivalent to 2 over 2 square root of 5. So, we can say that um, horizontal component of BE is equal to PBE times 2 over 2 square root of 5. Okay? So, we have PBC. Now, PBC here is unknown. PAB, we have already the value of PAB. That is 11,000 Newton. We have computed this one already when we um, determine the force at joint A. Okay? So, we have PAB, which is 11,000 Newton, plus PBEH, that is equal to PBE times 2 over 2 square root of 5 is equal to 0. Now, PBE is 11,180.34. So, we can um, replace this by the value 11,180.34. So, we have PBC here, the answer. 6,000 Newton and we have positive answers so therefore we have correct assumption that PBC is in tension. So this is the force of member BC. And now we are down with our last unknown which is PCE. Okay? We have last unknown PCE. So we use joint C. So at joint C now, at joint C, we have downward load, vertical load, which is 6,000 Newton. We also have um, the inclined load. Let's assume that that is tension, PCE. And we have horizontal load, PCD and PCB. Now, again, we have already computed PCB. PCB is... PCB or PBC is 6,000 Newton and that is in tension. So we have here 6,000 Newton that is PBC. That is in tension. Okay, so we um, adapt its original or its real direction. And then we have PCD. Now PCD, we have already computed that one. We have 9,000 Newton which is in tension. So therefore, we adapt its real direction. So, that is intention acting away from the joint. So, that is 9,000 Newton. That is P, C, D. Okay? So, we can use either positive... We can, we can use either summation of forces horizontal or summation of force vertical. Either way, um, we could come up with 
um, single unknown that is PCE. But in this case, now to be simpler lang, I would prefer summation of forces vertical is equal to zero, upward forces are positive. So we have here um, 6,000 newton. This one is negative since this one is acting uh, downward plus the vertical component of PCE which is acting upward that is PCEV and then we do not have other load other vertical load so that is equal to zero now again PCEV going back to our figure PC the vertical component is basically equal to PCEV PCE times the sine of alpha okay so if this one is our alpha this one so pce is the or the vertical component is the opposite so we use sine okay now we can again use sine alpha is equal to 4 over 2 square root of 5 so we have negative 6000 newton plus pce sine of alpha is equal to 0, negative 6,000 newton plus PCE times sine alpha is 4 over 2 square root of 5 is equal to 0. So by cross multiplying, we have, uh, we have the force on member CE which is equal to 6,708.204 newton. Since we have positive answer and our direction is tension, so therefore, PC is in tension. And this is the um, force of member CE. As a summary, so these are the um, forces of each member in our truss. So for PAB, PAE, PBE, PBC, PCE, PCD, and PDE. And that's it for the analysis of trust. So, medyo mahaba siya, but it's, um, it would be better if you practice, solve a lot of problems para mas uh, maging madali na lang sa inyo ang pag-solve ng trust. Again, guys, thank you for listening and see you in my next video. But don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you, guys, and God bless.